Okay, this is uh, JP from New England Cop Chases. Um, I basically uh, wanted to make a full video. Um, the reason why I took long is because I had to get these discovery requests back from uh, my arrest. Um, I don't know if you know this, but this video that's labeled New England Cop Chaser JP gets harassed and assaulted by Detective Douche Brown. Um, his name is Aaron Brown. Um, which essentially led to my arrest. Well, anyways, in this video, um, I think it's got like two, two thousand something views. I'm, I'm really surprised on how uh, little views there are. Probably because it's a really long video. Um, it's like 16 minutes and 30 seconds. So maybe if I could slim it down and just chop all at the end of it, it'll probably get more views. But Detective Aaron Brown basically moved me from a an, an area which was unreasonable to capture on video. Um, I was going uh, with a guy named David Jurist, um, who did some uh, cop chasing activism with us uh, for about a year or so. Um, and he was going to a meeting, and I, I wasn't cop chasing this night. It was like 27 degrees out. Um, it was Upper Main Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. And I saw two unmarked vehicles pulled over a young black man. So I wanted to get out because apparently um, there's this ghost unit, uh, the gang street unit, that's been doing stop and frisk and legal search and seizures from the, all these vehicles. So I wanted to capture it and the video is right on the screen right there. Um, I can't figure out how to link. I'm not that smart. So if any of, you, any of my followers know how to link, and uh, I could work on YouTube videos, I will gladly take the help. Um, I'm, I'm a single father with full custody of two minor children, so um, I have a lot of a lot of uh, time on my... Um, don't have a whole lot of time on my hands. So anyways, the video's labeled New England Cop Chaser, JP Gets Harassed and Assaulted by Detective Douche Brown. That's the heading of the video. Um, the link... The link um, I can't put on the thing. So, well, anyways, I want to uh, update you on the whole situation. So basically, I videotaped this cop at a traffic stop with this illegal search and seizure under my suspicion. That's what he was doing. When a group of civilians came by on the sidewalk, I decided to move simultaneously by him. Like, it, like if you see the video, you'll see me moving at the same time. He didn't go after them. He beelined it towards me specifically to stop me from video recording or hearing what him and his little crony douchebag detectives had to say. Um, so he pushed me, not physically, but basically strong-armed me to go all the way, almost almost 100 yards, unreasonable um, distance away, so I couldn't capture anything. In the process of that, he bumped me twice. Um, you can't see that in the video, but you can definitely see him with his hand go towards me. He says, go that way, go that way, whatever. So you can see that on the video. So I filed a complaint, as you, as you will see in the video, that I called uh, uh, Lieutenant Mucci, who I've had an issue with before, with not taking a complaint. He actually, the, the complaint that I filed on him of not taking a complaint was founded. Of course, he had this memory block about it, um, but maybe I'll throw that up on the Facebook page if I can find it. It's like three years old, but anyways, I filed a complaint. He took a complaint card even though he said he wasn't going to. So me and Chris Waite, uh, co-host of Free Talk Live, he's a cop chaser, um, part of uh, the cop chasers and Keen Cop Lock. He does both. Um, and he's a co-host of the radio show Free Talk Live, I believe once a week, um, working on his own radio show and podcast. He's a very smart dude. Um, I really like um, the company um, and how he carries himself. And um, his no aggression policy with everything is uh, really good. He's good to have around. He's the one that videotaped the, uh, the prison video um, when I was sticking up for David Ridley. When David Ridley uh, illegally got handed a no trespass order for being on public property. Well, anyways, Chris Waite 
me, me and him went to Manchester Police Department. I filed a formal complaint with a Sergeant Sanders. Yeah, funny, right? Um, Colonel Sanders, Sergeant Sanders. But Sergeant Sanders is also in this gang unit. Um, he's one of the head honchos of the gang unit. Friends with Aaron Brown. My suspicion, of course. Well, anyways, I filed this complaint. We did this doc, um, doc series. I have the video of my arrest actually in Rochester, New Hampshire, and they said I had a warrant. I knew right off the bat that that guy was nervy as hell. You can find that video too. And I believe the video is labeled JP Gets Arrested. Uh, it's the first time I ever gotten arrested this seven years. I've been going after police accountability and exploiting their BS and going after their lying little sacks. Um, anyways, I got arrested. Uh, Chris followed me all the way to the Manchester Police Department, which is over an hour and 40 minutes away. It was like, it was a long drive. So he bailed me out $40. I never got arrested in New Hampshire before, so it was very low bail. And I, they even at the police station, they wouldn't tell me what the heck the arrest was for, or what the warrant was for. If it's Manchester, I had a guess. Um, I didn't know it was about the Aaron Brown thing, though. Um, because I've been going after their gang unit for a good three years now. And I've been working on a civil case building up to this point. So anyways, yeah, there's a lot of videos of them, you know, arresting us, confronting us, even taking our camera away. So anyways, and even Chris Waite at a uh, DUI checkpoint, he was arrested at one point too. Um, which is really stupid. <laughs> anyway, you know, hey, well, I don't mind having an in-ground pool and a, and a fence wrapped around my yard, so keep illegally arresting us. We're just going to be rich people at the end. Anyways, I got arrested. I didn't know what the hell the thing was about. I'm reading the bill, the bill slip, and it said I needed to stay away from victim Detective Aaron Brown. So right then I made the connection. And the cops in the police station, they know what the charges are about. They know exactly what's going on in their CAD, which is called Computed Aided Dispatch. They know what I'm charged with. They know, and they were just, you know, playing dumb the day I got arrested. So I wasn't in jail very long. I was in a, in a cell for maybe an hour and a half. So I, I can't complain too much. The uh, officers that took me there didn't say much. Um, the Rochester officer that was linking up with the Manchester PD was actually really nice. He actually let me charge my phone and in, in his car. And he, he was actually, we had a long conversation. In fact, I want a 91A that video because that conversation going back and forth is really important for the viewers to see and my fans to see because uh, he said a lot and it, it made some sense um, on what their thinking is. Uh, basically, I had a ride-along, but I was in cuffs. Well, anyways, um, trial date after trial date got postponed a few times. My arraignment date, um, I was being representing by, represented by a hotshot lawyer, a liberty uh, freedom lawyer um, named uh, John Meyer. He's a Harvard, um, Harvard Law graduate, been doing it since 1979. Um, he has many accommodations um, for liberty and freedom. Um, he's a constitutional lawyer, and he sticks up for rights, and he takes cases pro bono if he, if he feels that a huge injustice has happened. Um, and he did that in this case. Um, he was very interested in this case and interested in uh, civil action afterwards. So um, I don't know if you know John Meyer, but he's the one that won the New Hampshire vs. Allard case where this uh, female lied about um, a cop um, during a complaint and the New Hampshire Supreme Court says she has, a, she has a right to lie because it's her right to protest against police. I didn't even lie in mine and I got arrested for it. I was charged with false swearing and filing a false report. Basically it's self-determination because I'm filing a complaint on a Manchester police officer, a detective, who I guess was highly respected, and uh, I was charged for it, which is a huge no-no. Um, I don't even know where they get the balls to do that, but we were going to fight it. We were going to take it all the way to the New Hampshire Supreme Court, and we were going to go after them even after the fact. So here we are. Um, April 13th was my trial date that came on a Friday. 
Um, but that Monday, John Myers sends me a PDF of a filing that the county attorney in Manchester for the Hillsborough County Attorney's Office, Hillsborough County, uh, which is the Manchester area, or Hillsborough North. They have two, Hillsborough South and Hillsborough North. The Hillsborough County North uh, County Prosecutor filed a motion to continue, um, and in the facts of in the facts of the uh, filing, which you can find on Cop Chasers. Facebook page, I actually put the PDF on that page, it says that the reason why they're asking for a continuance is because Aaron Brown was being investigated. We all know that usually investigations are shit and they just throw on in the closet and I was thinking it was going to get postponed after this stupid investigation done because they, they self-determine themselves of doing no wrong. And this is the problem with self-determination. I believe it's a, a violation of the public's jurisdiction over the public officials. And I believe um, with the 8th article of the New Hampshire State Constitution of be, and having officers oath accountable to the public, I don't think it follows that. I believe it's a clear violation of the Constitution of the state of New Hampshire to self-determine themselves um, even with the AG's office involved, they usually clear these guys. Now, I'll get to the AG's office in a moment because this, um, I think the viewers should know that this new AG and this whole crew are going after cops in the state of New Hampshire like with extreme prejudice. Um, so I want to take advantage of this moment um, in this time period because not always, you know, you... You know, every every time they vote a new governor in, there's a whole new administration, even through the AG's office. New appointees and stuff that either for the police, against the police, for the police, against it. And that's all about politics, which is BS. Getting back to Aaron Brown. So that Thursday comes around, which is April 12th, um, just a few weeks ago. My phone is absolutely going absurd, um, blowing up. So I'm going to read the uh, the article to you um, so cop chases uh, fans can know what happened to mister Aaron Brown and then I'll tell you what happened on my trial date on April 13th in the morning uh, Manchester Hillsborough County prosecutors will once again have to consider whether this week's termination of a Manchester police officer will have any impact on pending criminal cases county attorney Dennis Hogan said on Thursday Hogan said he has yet to begun an analysis of cases investigated by Aaron Brown. On Wednesday, Manchester Police Chief Nick Willard announced he had terminated Brown after putting him on paid leave for two months. Willard said he believes that potential wrongdoings on the part of the 10-year Manchester Police veteran rise to the level of a crime and criminal investigation will soon commence. When police are accused of misconduct, it can harm their credibility, making it difficult for prosecutors to win cases involving the officer in question. The reason why they can't is if you look or Google um, State of New Hampshire vs. Lori, uh, they have what they call a Lori list in the State of New Hampshire. And the New Hampshire State of New Hampshire vs. Lori case, the New Hampshire Supreme Court said that any cop that is known to lie, get charged or convicted and admits wrongdoing under oath can no longer testify in any case that they have um, that they are involved in. That's what that's referring to. When police are accused of misconduct or harm their credibility making it difficult for prosecutors to win cases involved in other quests. Well go through and see what cases he was involved in, Hogan said. The impact it wouldn't depend on what Brown's Brown's trouble is, which is absolute bullshit. Last month, Hogan announced he had to drop 35 felony drug cases that involved Darren Murphy, an undercover Manchester police detective fired in early February for unspecified misconduct. Willett said at that time that the misconduct was not criminal in nature, but Hogan was since said he plans to have an outside police agency undertake a criminal investigation of Murphy's actions. Hogan said that from what he understands, the potential wrongdoings on the part of both Murphy 
and brown are totally separate matters, which I am calling BS, because they're in the same unit. So, on Wednesday, Willie told WMUR-TV, that's Channel 9, that Brown and Murphy worked in different units in the same division. Bullshit! Brown's alleged misconduct took place both on, on and off duty. Willard said Brown was a detective in the street crime unit that the station reported. That's the ghost unit. Willard did not respond to the union leader's emails or requests for interviews through his communications officer. Meanwhile, court records say that a third fired Manchester officer, Stephen Konashia, was initially charged with felony hit and run after a pedestrian was struck in downtown Manchester last May. The felony charge alleged that the injured that he injured a woman in an off-duty accident, but he pleaded guilty in February to a Class B misdemeanor charge of conduct after an accident. The prosecutor changed the wording to say that the accident damaged only the victim's property. Basically, when this cop went to court, basically, he had, like, this, you know, wimpy collapse and acted like a baby and started crying and he collapsed. This is that Kanachia guy. His case was delayed a month February after, after he collapsed in a courthouse hallway while waiting court hearing. What a, what a coward. Manchester police. Cowards. So, I'm going to scroll back and, um... Read to you what the chief said. If I can uh, pull it up quick enough so the video is just not. Aaron Brown, who has been a member of the police department since July 2007, was placed on administrative leave back February 20th. Um, Aaron Brown, Willard said, there's a criminal investigation will be open of Brown's actions. Manchester police are working with both New Hampshire Attorney General's Office and Hillsborough County Attorney. An investigation. We investigated Mr. Brown. Willard said during that investigation, information came to light that I believe rose to the level of criminality. Willard said he cannot comment on what Brown is accused of doing, but did say the conduct he is accused of occurred both on and off duty. He betrayed the trust of this community. He said he betrayed the trust of the police department. He betrayed the trust of the men and women he served with. And uh, they keep like linking this Kanachi guy. I don't know if it's linked to the same thing or not. But let's see if I can play a clip. I don't think I've ever been this disappointed. Manchester Police Chief Nick Willard and Come on, play. Announcing the firing of two members of the force, Officer Stephen Carnaccia was on leave since last May. He was arrested for conduct after an accident in an alleged hit-and-run crash while off-duty. And Aaron Brown, a detective in the street crime unit who's been on paid leave since late February. We investigated Mr. Brown. During that investigation, information came to light um, that I believe rose to the level of criminality. Willard says he cannot comment on what Brown is accused of doing, but a criminal investigation will be conducted. He betrayed the trust of this community. He betrayed the trust of this police department. He betrayed the trust of um, the men and women that he served with. These follow the firing of Detective Darren Murphy in February. Since then, dozens of his drug cases have been dropped, and the chief is seeking a criminal investigation after new information came to light. The chief says Brown and Murphy worked in the same division, but different units, and that the criminal investigations into the two detectives are not related. Some of the conduct was on duty. Uh, some of the conduct was off duty. Willard will be looking into whether or not any of Brown's cases might be affected. If we have somebody here who doesn't belong here, we will root them out. Uh, we will fire them, and if we ha if we if the opportunity avails itself, given the information, we will charge them with a crime. Now, the chief says he understands the public wants more information about these allegations. He's working with the county attorney and the attorney general. He expects more information to be released if charges are filed. We're live in Manchester. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News. Okay, so there you go. You heard the story. Um, I don't know. Basically, for what I'm told, my lawyer filed a very huge discovery request 
um, because my trial date was April 13th when all this stuff with Aaron Brown was going down. I didn't know any of it, and he didn't know any of it until that Monday. Um, <clears throat> he was working on a couple other cases, um, some civil cases, so he wasn't paying attention to the town, well, city rhetoric, because his office is in Manchester. Well, excuse me. Um, so basically, that Friday the county attorney's office which I heard was ready to dismiss the charges anyway because it's just stupid you file a complaint on a cop I shouldn't have to fear getting arrested for it so this guy is a, is a crooked cop he's a dickhead he's an asshole and not only did my kids have to think I was in jail all night that night because it took all night to get all that stuff done. The drive, the link, the being charged and being bailed out. Driving from Manchester all the way back home. I had to pay a, a sitter all night long who I lost over the situation. Um, because she was supposed to go somewhere and I was supposed to be home way earlier. Um, and that, that bridge got burned. And of course my credibility through going after cops. I mean the cops had brass balls for like almost a year. And they're like, oh, we don't believe a word you say. What are you going to lie about me? Like they were accosting me about this charge. Now they're all being nice to me. Because now I'm going after every fucking one of them. And I'm getting sick of these bullshit cops trying to bully people when they're crooked themselves and doing criminal, criminal activity on and off duty. Um, kudos to the chief. Um, I don't know if he's making a spectacle or, or, or trying to single him out. Um, trying to make a political point so he can be re-elected by the city board. Who knows what political motivation he has. But it didn't work before. All of a sudden he's firing all these cops. Kind of funny that this new AG that's in the new attorney general's office in there doesn't like crooked cops and he wants an audit done like in all these police stations. And all of a sudden the chief wants to get on his good side and uh, start locking up cop his own cops. Um, like I read in the other article, it said they're actually bringing in an outside police agency in to investigate. I believe they're asking um, Carroll County uh, Sheriff's Department to come in, which is a county not even in Hillsborough County, but Carroll County, to come in to investigate it um, with a, a separate county attorney from Carroll County. Um, so there's no uh, conflicts, conflicts of interest. Well, anyways... When April 13th came around, in the morning, I still thought I had to go to this, uh, this hearing um, during my, my trial date. So I get another PDF saying, an, an email saying, congratulations, JP, uh, the charges were dropped. So I immediately filed an emergency ex parte motion, which I have not handed in yet to the Superior Court. Um, to ask general relief because I'm filing a $1.2 million lawsuit against Manchester Police Department. Um, for a bunch of things. Um, it's not just that video. I've been strong on by them before and, try, and they tried to intimidate me before making false laws. They even said I had to register my BMX bike or, or next time they see me without a, a registration on a BMX bike they were going to arrest me. So that's just all bullshit. They don't like the camera. And then they arrested Chris Waite. He's saying, oh, I thought he had a weapon, but he went for his camera first and said his camera was in the left. I don't know the schematics of his case because I wasn't there. Uh, but he's seeking, he's, he's, you know, thinking about civil action too. In this case, he violated a bunch of things in this video. He violated the right to record, illegal interaction with a vid videographer, and put me into a spot where I was unreasonably removed from capturing things that are of public interest. Now they outlined public interest and they outlined the right to record in Glick vs. Conniff. That's G-L-I-K vs. Conniff, uh, First Circuit Court of U.S. Uh, U.S. First Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, it's called the Glick decision. And then it was outlined in another U.S. First, First Circuit Court of Appeals um, in Garek versus Began and Ware Police Department, Ware, New Hampshire. Um, they're not even allowed to interact, intervene, or invoke laws to stop recording. 
because our right to record supersedes, supersedes any misdemeanor. We hold jurisdiction over public officials, period. And that's something that cops need to learn. See, they're so bolstered all the time, and their egos are so imploded, their balls drop. And then they become they, they become gold balls or brass balls, thinking they can do whatever they want. Now I get this one line all the time, but he's a great guy. He does this, and he's a good man. Man, I I can't tell you how many people troll me, and and send me messages, threats, um, and they try to do call floods and complaint floods through Facebook to try to get the the cop chases at Facebook shut down. They don't realize that Facebook knows it's it's frivolous uh, reporting, and they'll get blocked for that. Um, and that hasn't happened in a long time. After uh, we went after, I believe it was called Police One or some stupid cop Facebook page uh, made this huge post. You need to go after these guys and complain, even though there's nothing to complain about. It's just lies. It's what cop and cop lovers do is they're so, uh, they become worshippers, it's almost like they're indoctrinated with this blue line bullshit, when they're actually under the public. It shouldn't be any brotherhood of the blue line, or blue lives matter. No, the people matter, okay? You make that oath for the people, not for a blue fucking line, period, okay? There's a reason why 6,900-something unarmed citizens have been shot by cops in the past two years. Almost 7,000 people. How many cops have been shot on duty? 169. It's horrible, but the, the, number, the number is way, way less than how many cops shoot unarmed citizens. And that, that's deaths. I'm not even counting the ones that survive. The number's probably double that. Um, I always lead people to the the Judge Evans decision. Judge Evans, um, you can look her up on YouTube when sentencing on a cop that beat a black man. And some of the comments that he said after beating the black man got caught on somebody else's camera. Um, he turned his lapel off, I think, and shut another camera off. But one of the other officers caught something. Um... And also the guy that shot that, that poor black kid, that poor black guy in the park in North or South Carolina. Um, I can't remember the, the name of the guy right off the top. But these cops were moguls of their community. And Judge Evans read like something like 120 character references from all kinds of people. Um, cops, lawyers, and you know, I guess this guy... He, he ran like a homeless shelter. He started a boxing club for inner city youth. He did all these. He's a deacon of his church. He pays his taxes. He never got a speeding ticket day in his life. He has a 25-year career uh, as, a, as a cop. But yet he became a cold-blooded murderer and shot somebody four times in the back. And then this Judge Evans um, with this, uh, beat, this uh, black man beating. You know, it, it's, just, it's just crazy. So, I have an interesting video of the sit-down of Aaron Brown. Um, this was uh, Sergeant Sanders sitting down with Aaron Brown. This is before Aaron Brown was charged with any crimes or anything. This is, was his view of what happened in the video. And in the video, there's two things I want to I wanna point out. It's 19 minutes long, um, so I'm going to cut this video as part one. And I'm going to play this video um, as part two um, for the podcast and for uh, the uh, Cop Chases YouTube channel. And I'm going to um, also add some, some video of uh, the cop chasing of the other night. I actually helped some cops look for an injured bear in the woods. I actually got it all on camera. It's actually fun, funny because we're in this small little town and the cop like brought an M4 <laughs> inside the woods. Um, so that was pretty. That was pretty funny. So I'm gonna cut the. I'm gonna cut the tape right here, um, because this lasted long, and and I want to update everybody uh, on the Aaron Brown thing. So on part two, I'm gonna play the video sit down interview 
with uh, Sergeant Sanders interviewing Detective Aaron Brown, and this is way prior to Aaron Brown getting charged with a crime and fired from the Manchester Police Department. And um, and I'll explain what two things I want you want the listeners to listen to, because this shows what police do with uh, you know people like us and people that uh, don't like crooked cops and we want accountability. I want them disarmed. I want them demilitarized, and I want them demoralized. Um, I will exploit every cop in the state of New Hampshire, and all of New England, and all of America, and if you bully anybody, I am going to bully you. And if you think you can strong arm me using a badge, I will see you in court, I will sue you, I will exploit you, and I will do it with extreme prejudice. Now, if you are a nice cop, gentle, you're a gentleman, and you treat me with respect, you'll never have a problem with me. But if you want to try to bully me, I'm going to verbally fucking assassinate you with every right I have. And you can kiss my ass with arresting me. Because if you try to do it, you're violating freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of the press, and my right to record you, dumbass. Alright? This is JP. Peace.